this is your student nurse Shikaina Aquino Maranga and for today's video I am going to perform the parenteral drug administration return demonstration. Parenteral drug administration refers to any method of administration other than the oral means. However, it is most commonly associated with injecting straight into the body by passing the skin and the mucous membranes. The most common routes for parenteral administration includes the intradermal, subcutaneous, intramuscular, and the intravenous routes. Now, in performing medication administration, it is important to remember to observe and perform the 10 rights of medication administration to ensure patient safety and ensure that we give our clients the most appropriate care. Now, for this video, I am going to perform three skills, which will be divided into three scenarios. The first scenario will include medication administration through the intradermal route. The second scenario will include medication administration through the subcutaneous route. And the third scenario will include medication administration through the intramuscular route. Now, these three scenarios have the same preparation phase, and so I am going to perform it at once to avoid making this video unnecessarily long. So now I am going to begin. Before we actually proceed with the actual um, administration of the medication to the patient, the first thing we would want to do is to check the doctor's order and the medication administration record. This is done so that we'll be able to identify what drug is to be given to the assigned patient. Um, we have to determine the drug's name, the dosage, the route of administration, and the time it is to be given. Now, um, after doing that, we also have to um, check the label of the medication against the medication administration record to ensure that we are going to prepare the right medication. Now, in uh, medication administration, it's, it is important to um, perform the three checks. We'll have to check or read the label of the medication when it is taken from the medication card. We'll have to read the label again before withdrawing the medication. And we'll have to read the label again after withdrawing the medication. So, after doing that, we'll have to proceed with the preparation of the equipments needed to conserve time and energy. The equipments include um, the syringes. I have a tuberculin syringe. I have my insulin syringe and a um, 5cc gauge 23 syringe. I also have my aspirating needle. I have my hypodermic tray and a forcep. I have my alcohol. I have my sterile water which will serve as the medication for this demonstration. I have cotton ball soap in a 70% alcohol, and I have my waste receptacles over here. And I am going to proceed now with the preparation of the medication. Now I am going to proceed with the preparation of the medication from a vial. So um, before I do that, I am going to perform hand hygiene to observe um, appropriate infection prevention procedure. So if the medication still needs to be reconstituted, then um, the vial would contain the powdered form of the medication and a diluent must be added into that vial. After adding a diluent, we must mix it thoroughly by rubbing the vial in between the palms of both our hands. Now, after doing that, I am going to um, prepare the um, syringe. Um, I have here a tuberculin syringe. This is ideal for... Um, skin testing and intradermal injections. So I'm going to open the packet. Um, we, it is important to remember that we can only touch the barrel and the plunger of the syringe to avoid contaminating the needle. Now since um, this comes with a needle already, I am going to loosen it up first so that I can connect my syringe into an aspirating needle. I am going to open the aspirating needle. And then connect the barrel into the aspirating needle. Ensure that the connection isn't loose. And I'm going to set it aside first. I am going to open the covering of the vial. Okay, and then uh, the rubber seal is then exposed. And so I am going to uh, clean it up using 
um, cotton ball soaked in a 70% alcohol. Now, after doing that, I am going to get my syringe, uncap the syringe, and then I am going to draw air into the syringe. The amount of air will be um, equal to the amount of medication that needs to be administered. And then I am going to um, push the air into the vial. So pushing air into the vial will prevent um, a vacuum from forming. And if you put too little air, then you will find it hard to draw out the medication. And if you put too much air, then the medication might be forced out of the um, syringe. So I'm going to invert the syringe and draw the exact amount of the medication needed. After doing that, if you see um, air bubbles inside the syringe, then you can uh, lightly tap the barrel to expel the air bubbles and then I am going to um, remove this aspirating needle okay and then throw the aspirating needle into the uh, waste receptacle to avoid needle prick injury I am going to connect this um, barrel uh, now to the appropriate size needle Okay, I am going to place um, this syringe with uh, medication into the hypodermic tray and I am going to write the medication ticket so that we won't forget what medication it is, the dosage, and um, for who it is assigned to. Now I am going to proceed to the preparation of medication in an ampule. So this is what an ampule looks like. I don't have an ampule right now because the pharmacies I went into wouldn't let me buy one. So I'm just going to improvise. So what, are, uh, what am I going to do first? I am going to prepare my syringe. So I have here my um, 5cc gauge 23 syringe for my intramuscular um, injection. I'm going to open the packet and since my syringe comes in with a needle, I am going to loosen it first so that I can connect it into an aspirating needle. So an aspirating needle will um, help reduce the risk of having glass inside the, into the medication. So I am going to connect um, my syringe into the needle, make sure that the connection isn't loose. Okay, I'm going to set it down first. So with an ampule, what we would want to do is to uh, flick the upper stem of the ampule um, a, a couple of times first. After doing that, we're going to get a gauze or a cotton ball. Hold the cotton ball in between the fingers and the neck of the ampule and then break the ampule away from you and away from other people um, just for caution. Okay, after doing that, we're going to discard the broken neck of the ampule, set it down, then we're going to get our syringe, and then we're going to draw out the medication. Now I'm going to recap the needle. So I can uh, take the um, aspirating needle off, discard the aspirating needle into the sharp container so that um, we can avoid um, needle prick injury and then connect the um, syringe into its right size needle. Now I'm going to place this into the hypodermic tray and then I am going to um, write the medication ticket. Now I am going to do the intradermal. Now I am going to do the intradermal 
Medication administration. Intradermal administration is the introduction of a small amount of solution into the dermis or the layer beneath the epidermis. So after preparing the medication, I am going to head over to my patient's room. I am going to introduce myself to my patient, verify my patient's identity, and explain the procedure to the patient. Good morning, ma'am. I am Shekaina Maranga. I'll be your student nurse for today. So how are you doing today, ma'am? That's really good to hear. So um, may I see your wristband, ma'am? Please state your complete name. And your birthday, please. Okay, thank you. So ma'am, today we'll be doing a penicillin skin test. So what I'm going to do is to inject a small amount of um, the penicillin into the um, forearm, um, the skin in your forearm, um, to check if you are allergic to the medication or not. Will that be fine? Okay, so before we begin, um, I'm just gonna close the door so that no one will disturb us while we're doing the procedure, okay? Closing the door will ensure patient's privacy and after doing that, we'll have to assist the patient in a comfortable position and then select the site for injection. Now we'll have to select the site for injection. It should be three to four finger widths below the antecubital space and one hand above the wrist. We should avoid uh, using sites that are inflamed, tender, is swelling, and has lesions. We'll also have to apply clean gloves. After applying clean gloves, we'll have to um, clean the selected site for injection using a cotton ball soaked in a 70% alcohol and then um, start in a circular motion um, starting from the center going outwards. After doing that, we are going to get our syringe and um, prepare it for injection. So we'll have to remove the cap of the syringe. If there are um, air bubbles present, we can tap the barrel to remove the um, trapped air bubbles. And then we should hold the um, syringe between our thumb and four fingers and then hold it. Um, almost parallel to the skin surface with a bevel needle up. We also have to stretch the skin taunt. Now I am going to advance my needle into the patient's skin and then push the medication in until uh, slowly until a wheel will form. The appearance of a wheel indicates that the medication has entered the area between the uh, intradermal tissues and that the medication has been correctly placed in the dermis. Now we'll have to um, withdraw the needle um, the same angle it was inserted to um, minimize patient discomfort and minimize damage to the tissue. Now we are going to discard the needle into the waste receptacle. And then we are going to draw a circle around the wheel. We should use a blue or black pen because a red pen will interfere with the um, reading. Okay, ma'am, I'm done. So um, are you feeling all right? That's good. So we will learn the results after at least 30 minutes. So um, I'm going to head out first so that you can have some rest here while waiting, okay? So just ensure not to massage the area of injection and do not erase the mark that I placed around it, okay? So if you need anything, do not hesitate to call your uh, to use your call button so that I can come back here and attend to your needs, okay? After doing the procedure, discard the gloves used and perform aftercare of the equipment. Also proceed to the documentation process of the procedure. After 30 minutes, ensure to come back to the patient's room to interpret the results of the skin test. Now I am going to perform the subcutaneous medication administration. Subcutaneous administration is the introduction of a small amount of solution into the adipose tissue beneath the skin by means of syringe and needle. So after preparing the medication, head over to the uh, patient's room, introduce yourself to the patient, verify patient's identity, explain the procedure to the patient, and ensure patient's privacy as well. Good morning, ma'am. 
Um, I'm Trina Maranga. I'll be your student nurse for today. How are you feeling uh, today, ma'am? Okay, that's good. Um, I'll just check your wristband, ma'am. Please state your complete name and your birthday, please. Okay, great. So, ma'am, uh, today we'll be doing the um, administration of your insulin. Uh, insulin will help um, your body control your blood sugar as you, as you have um, type 1 diabetes. Okay, so I'll be uh, injecting um, your insulin in the subcutaneous layer of your skin over your abdomen. Will that be fine? Okay, um, so I'll just close the door so that um, no one from outside will disturb us while we're doing this, okay? After that, assist the patient in a comfortable position and then select the site um, for injection that is free of lesion, free of inflammation, swelling, or um, tenderness. Now for subcutaneous injection, we still have to select the site that is free of lesion, free of tenderness, swelling, or lesions, and then we'll have to apply clean gloves. After doing that, we are going to um, clean the selected site um, using an antiseptic swab, swab, starting from the center, going outwards. And then we are going to prepare our syringe for um, injection. So, um, uncap the syringe, pinch the skin, hold the syringe as if you are holding a dart, and then um, inject the medication into the patient. So we are going to inject the needle at a 45 degree angle. Now I'm going to release the pinch skin and then support the syringe and then push the medication in. And then after doing that, I am going to um, remove the um, needle, the same angle it was inserted. Now, if bleeding occurs, apply pressure to the site with dry sterile gauze until it stops. And then, we have to dispose the used syringe into our waste receptacle. Okay, ma'am. So, we're done. Um, how are you feeling? Okay, good. Um, so, since we're done, I am going to head out now so that uh, you can have some rest, okay? If you need anything, um, use your call button so that I can come back here and um, attend to your needs, okay? Great. After doing the procedure, discard the gloves used. Perform the aftercare of the equipment and proceed to uh, documentation of the procedure done. So now I am going to proceed with the intramuscular administration of the medication. Intramuscular administration is the introduction of the medication deep into the muscle tissue where there is a large network of blood vessel that can absorb the medication readily and quickly. So after preparing the medication, head to the patient's room, introduce yourself to the patient, verify patient's identity, and explain the procedure to the patient and also um, ensure the patient's privacy. Hi ma'am, good morning. I'm Shikaina Maranga. I'll be your student nurse for today. Um, I'll just check your wristband ma'am. Please state your complete name. Okay, your birthday please. Okay ma'am, so um, I'll be um, administering you um, a, the medication that has been prescribed by your doctor. Um, its drug name is cortisone. It is an anti-inflammatory which will help you with your tendinitis, okay? I will be injecting this medication in your uh, shoulder. Will that be fine? Okay, so I'll just close the door so that no one will disturb us while we're doing this procedure, okay? After explaining the procedure to the patient, uh, proceed with assisting the patient in um, the most comfortable position for her and um, and select the site for injection. Now for intramuscular injection, we have to select the site that is free of lesion, free of inflammation, swelling, and tenderness, and then apply clean gloves. 
After doing that, we'll have to clean the site of injection using an antiseptic swab starting from the center going outwards. And then discard the used antiseptic swab. After doing that, we're going to prepare for injection. So we are going to um, get our syringe and cap the syringe hold the syringe using our dominant hand as if holding a dart and then using the z track method we are going to advance the needle into the patient's skin so we are going to advance the needle at a 90 degree angle after doing that we are going to um, aspirate see if there is blood um, that will appear on the plunger if there is we are going to remove the needle and discard the syringe and get a new one if there is no blood then we can insert the or we can administer the medication steadily and slowly now we are going to um, remove the needle from the patient's a body the same angle it was inserted and then apply pressure to the um, injection site then discard the syringe into the waste receptacle to avoid needle prick injury okay ma'am so we're done with your um, intramuscular injection how are you feeling are you feeling fine okay that's good um so since we're done i'm gonna let you have some rest now so i'm gonna head out okay so if you need anything just use your call button so that i'll be notified uh, from the nurse's station and come back here to attend your need okay okay after doing the procedure um discard the gloves used perform the aftercare of the equipment and proceed to the documentation process of the procedure done.